Hello everybody, this video explains the effect of humps on supercritical flow in open channels. So, what's the problem? Consider the following long prismatic open channel where the flow is uniform, supercritical, and flow number is greater than 1. So, what happens if a hump is inserted to this channel? What happens if a longer hump is inserted to this channel? Is the flow would be affected if the hump became higher? The is the roughness of the hump has a significant effect on the flow? We are going to answer all these questions through this video. So, the objective of this video is to experimentally study the flow over the humps when the approach flow is supercritical and determine how total energy line varies with hump height, hump length, flow rate, and hump roughness. We are going to apply this different previous case in our experiments, so keep focused with us. Now we will turn to the concept of the experiment. This experiment depends on Bernoulli equation, which states that total energy at point 1 equal to total energy at point 2 plus the losses, as shown in this graph. Experimental setup 1. Circulating flow with dimensions 10 meter long, 0.3 meter wide, and 0.8 meter deep, as shown in the figure. 2. Point gauge, and point gauge is used for measuring water surface level and bed level. 3. Wood panels With dimension 30 cm long, 5 cm wide, and 2 cm deep for each, these wood panels can be placed in a horizontal way or a vertical way with respect to the held experiment. Here's the list of abbreviation of the symbols that will be used in this experiments. Now we will turn to the experiments discussed in this video. Experiment number one Q is variable, normal depth is variable, and frown number is variable as well. And the other parameters are constant in the experiment. While in experiment 2, the length of the hump will be variable, while the other parameters will be constant. In experiment 3, the height of the hump will be variable, while the other parameters will be constant. And finally, experiment number 4, hump roughness is variable, while the other parameters are constant. Now we will begin with experiment number 1. There are two cases. In case 1, Q1 equal 12.5 liter per second, and in case 2, Q equal 25.6 liter per second. We will begin with case 1, which is 12.5 liter per second, from number equal 1.53. Hump and the water level upstream hump is greater than critical depth. In the second case, by increasing the charge to 25.6 liter per second at flow number 1.64, y upstream equal 8.23 and y downstream equal 8.04. As we see in the figure, no hydrogen jump uh, occurs, and uh, critical depth is uh, uh, greater than uh, water depth at hump. So let's recap. By increasing the charge, we will turn to the case 2, and uh, the uh, following uh, graph shows the total energy line for the different cases, and it includes the uh, total head losses that uh, had been happened due to placing the pump. 
Experiment number two, changing the hump length. There are three cases for changing the length. Five centimeters in ten centimeters in twenty centimeter. Uh, first, let's equal five centimeter. Y of three equal eight point two three, and Y of three equals eight point zero four. As we see in this figure, no hydrogram occurs, and the critical depth is greater than water depth at hump. By increasing the hump length to 10 cm, y of stream equals 13.9 and y of stream equals 8.04 cm. By increasing the hump length again, y of stream equals 17.96 and y of stream equals 7.96. As we see here, uh, hydrogram occurs and uh, water depth at the hump equals to critical depth. So let's recap by increasing the hump, increasing the length, then increasing the length again. The following figure shows the total energy line for different cases. And as we see here, uh, there's a change in the head losses slopes due to Replacing the hump. Experiment number three: changing the hump height. Delta Z is a variable here. First, delta Z equal to centimeter. Y of stream hump equal 8.23 and Y of stream equal 8.04 centimeter. As we see here, no hydrogen occurs and the critical depth is greater than water depth at hump. By increasing the hump height to 4 cm, y of stream equal 15.9, y of stream equal 7.31. By increasing the hump height again to 8 cm, y of stream equal 21.2, and y of stream equal 6.58. Uh, as we see here, a hydrogram occurred, but it's not visible because uh, the presence of the gradually varied flow. As we see here, hydrogram occurs and water. Depths at hump equals to critical water depths. So let's recap the ex experiment. By increasing the height, then by increasing the height again, we get the, these three uh, cases. And this figure shows the different total energy line for the different uh, cases and changing the head losses due to the replacement of the hump. So we have number four, changing the hump roughness. We have two cases. Uh, first, the uh, smooth hump. What y of stream equal 8.23 and y double 3 equal 8.04. As we see here, no hydrogen occurs and the water critical depth is greater than the water depth at hump. As we see here, by increasing the roughness, y of stream equal 7.25 cm and y double stream equal 7.25. So, no hydrogen occurs either here. And the water depth at hump is smaller than critical depth line. So let's recap by increasing roughness, we get the following figure. Uh, and this figure shows uh, the change in the total energy line, change of the roughness of the hump. Finally, we will turn to the conclusion. To sum up, hydrogen jump occurs by decreasing fluid charge, increasing hump length, and increasing hump height, which means that fluid charge, hump length, and hump height have a significant effect on changing of the flow. On the other hand, hydrogen jump doesn't occur by increasing hump roughness which means that hump roughness has no any significant effect on the flow thank you for watching this video this video was prepared by Karim Mohammed Ahmed Suleiman Hamad Asam Radwan Ibrahim Shir Mohammed and Mustafa Bouma Daoud under supervision of professor Ashraf Ghanim and Dr Ihya Iman